Hello and welcome back. In today's session, we will look at some hands-on for the introduction to containers and then we will also dive into some uh, practicalities of what is a container using a Linux uh, machine and we will also poke around the docker engine container runtime. So here I have a um, Linux EC2 instance that I'm running so I'm, I'm using the Amazon AMI and I'm using t2.micro that should be uh, more than enough and uh, the first thing we will need is docker so i've already installed docker here um, if you don't have docker then you can install it so you can use yum install docker and uh, this will help you to uh, install docker and then you will need to uh, check the service so you can use service docker status to basically check whether the docker is running or not so ideally you will need to have docker so we'll, we are using docker engine uh, container runtime to uh, start and stop our containers and we'll also use some of the uh, existing container images that are already available on the internet so for the hands-on so if you want you can do this along with me and be able to run the same commands uh, with docker container runtime so again like i said you will need to first install docker and uh, you can run the same commands that i'm running here and you can kind of you know uh, get to understand how what are the different commands we have so now that we have our docker already installed uh, like i said you will need to confirm that the docker daemon is running so for that you can use this command so service docker status command so when you run this command if the uh, status is active so here you can see active then we are good if not then you will need to uh, start the service first in order for us to work with this docker runtime so you can use the command service docker start so service docker start to uh, start the docker daemon service all right now that we have our uh, docker service running we can start with our uh, first container so what we're going to do here is we're going to run this command docker container run and we will be passing some flags to this command. So the first flag that uh, we will pass is this hyphen hyphen rm. Now what this flag simply tells is that I want to delete the artifact of the container once I exit from the container. So automatically delete any artifacts that are associated with the container once I exit from the container. The next flag you are passing is hyphen it. Now uh, we can use this flag uh, to tell that you want you want the container to be interactive. That is, whenever you want to interact and you want to connect to the container, we can make use of the hyphen it flag. So this will give us a shell inside the container so that we can run commands from inside the container. Next, we will pass this hyphen hyphen name. So whenever you want to give a name to your container like let's say i want to call this con uh, container as alpine container then we can make use of the hyphen hyphen name flag so this will allow us to uh, give a name to the container and then we will pass the, the name of the image that we want to use to create this container so here we are using an existing container image alpine which is a linux os and we are just using the uh, file system so that we can use some of the pre-installed binaries that are available in this file system and then finally uh, uh, we want to run this container image which is to get the uh, interactive shell so i want to interact with this container so we'll be using this bin ash all right so we are creating a container i want to delete the artifacts once i uh, exit from the container i want to have an interactive shell we are giving a name to the container, uh, the image that we want to use to create the container and then um, interact with the container that is, you know, like connect to the uh, container. So running this command will create our first container for us. So now uh, the container is created and now we are inside the container. So you can see here earlier um, uh, it was showing with this one this was because i was inside the ec2 instance now from the ec2 instance i have connected to my container and that's why you see the prompt it is different all right so this is an isolated environment and we can now start exploring uh, some of the comparisons between different containers and how containers work so for this we will compare the terminal session 
of our container machine and then our host machine so what i've done here is i've opened up two terminal uh, both the terminals are to the same ec2 instance but then in one of the terminal i am connected to the container and the other terminal i am connected to the ec2 instance so here uh, we will compare the host machine uh, with the terminal session of the container machine that we have created over here so this is my host machine and this is the uh, container that we are connected to now let's say um, i want to see all the processors that are running on the uh, host machine on my ec2 instance so for this we can use this uh, ps aux command and here you can see the list of all the processors that are running uh, on my host machine so this command the ps aux command will show you all the processors that are running the host machine and you can see here there are a lot of processes that we are running here now if i run the same command inside the container so here if i run the same command you will see i have only two processes that uh, it is showing all right this is basically the shell that i am in and then the uh, ps command that we have just executed right so this is a temporary process that is created so this is where the process id namespace comes in and we are in a completely isolated environment so my container is not able to see the processes that are running on the host machine right so this is basically the isolated environment that we have so the container is completely unaware of the other processes which are running on the host machine and now we are in our little secure environment so this way we can run multiple containers on the same host machine and they are completely isolated from each other and are unaware of what the other containers are running now another example of the namespace is the network namespace so let's say on the host machine if i run this command if config command which is the um, uh, uh, which can be used to see the network uh, interfaces so here you can see we have a lot of network interfaces um, running on the host machine so we have the um, uh, loopback um, network interface uh, which is uh, here and then we have the uh, first network interface which has an IPv4 address. So you can see we have different different uh, network interfaces over here. Now, if I run the same command inside the container, so you can see there's only two um, uh, network interfaces that we have, right? So we have uh, one which is having this 172.17.0.2 network. This basically means that we have a completely isolated network stack inside this container than what we have on the uh, host machine. So this is the network namespace isolation that is um, happening. So we have the IP address for the container. So we can do interesting things like container to container routing, isolate them on different subnets, isolate them through various firewall rules and all those things can be done by making use of the uh, network namespace. Now, a container isn't a predefined set of things like we do not, let's say, you know, you do not want to use a process ID namespace every time or if you do not want to use the network namespace every time we have that flexibility with your containers and let's say you know if you want it you can start a container without some of these isolated environments so let's say you don't want the uh, network isolation to happen so currently we have the network isolation so the container has its own network than compared to what we have on the host machine so let's say you don't want to have this network isolation right so um, for this let's say what we can do is when we are starting the container we can make use of the uh, network flag all right so let's say we want to we can use we can create a container so let me exit from this container and uh, we'll create one more container here so docker container run hyphen hyphen rm hyphen it and then we'll use this network flag which will tell you the uh, network that you want to use to uh, run the container and then doing so the container will uh, you know depending on the network that you are using so let's say in our case we'll use the host 
network so in using this network uh, the container will now start sharing the network namespace of the host machine okay so because we're using the host network all right so uh, let me give a name to this so let's say um, alpine host container uh, we'll give the image name and then the shell so we are inside the container now if i run the if config command you can see now i have many network interfaces and this is same as what i have on the host machine so let me run this one second so you can see at the top i have this br hyphen b288 and here also you should be able to see the same thing then i have the docker zero and there is our docker zero and then so on so basically now the container is uh, we no longer have the network isolation the container is able to see the network interfaces that we have on the um, host machine so this is just one of the example of how containers are completely flexible to run them and there may be requirements for us to not have the isolation for networking or there may be requirements to share the networking between lots of containers so there's a lot of flexibility on how to do this so this is just one example that we have so now we are no longer having the network isolation my container is having the same network interfaces as my host machine now this can also have a downside so the one downside of this is that the more restrictions or the more isolated parts that we remove the less secure the containers will become so uh, we will need to do these things with uh, uh, very caution for example the network host command means so the the command that we used here to um, start our uh, container uh, this particular command right so uh, in theory uh, this basically means that i can do packet sniffing of everything that the host machine is doing or if i have lots of containers on the server i can actually start doing packet sniffing across the containers so maybe this is this is not a very uh, secure flag uh, to use for the containers but an example to show how various parts of the isolations can be removed if required next let's see some actions with uh, c groups or control groups so let me exit from this uh, uh, container so once again we will start a new container but then we will uh, pass in the memory flag so control groups can be used when you want to control the uh, cpu allocation and mem memory allocation to your containers so we'll use docker container run we'll use hyphen hyphen rm hyphen it and then we will use this hyphen hyphen memory flag to specify the memory that you want to allocate to your container so i want to get to 56 mb uh, we will give a name to the container so let's say uh, c group demo and then the image that you want to use and then the shell so that we can interact with the container so let's run this oh sorry this should this should be bin so we are inside the container so this one that you see this is where your control groups or your c groups comes into the picture all right so now if you look at the um, uh, control group of this container so let's do a cat of sys fs uh, control group and then memory dot max so this is the number that we have so this is actually the number of bytes that this particular control group has access to all right so whatever we have allocated over here and this is the maximum number of bytes um, that your uh, container can use so if you look at this number and if you divide it with 1024 and then again divide it by uh, 1024 you will get 256 mb of your uh, memory and if you look at the host machine this is what we have so you can see here 
uh, the number so this is this is basically 1 GB of RAM that we have and we are allocating only 256 MB to the container all right so the server it has it's it's a 1 gb server and has more memory than what is allocated to the container and now i'm able to restrict how much or what is the amount the container can use by making use of the control groups now this is important you know using the control groups to uh, restrict uh, what is the resources your containers can use this is because if you have lots of containers and if you do not want one container to uh, take up all the resources then uh, it's recommended that you make use of your control groups and then allocate how much of memory the container can use and how much of cpu the containers can use and this brings us to the end of our session so in this particular session we have looked at running our first container with the docker container run command we also looked at some of the isolation parameters that are provided by the uh, namespace. So in particular, we have looked at the process ID namespace and then we have also looked at the network namespace. And then finally, we took a quick look at how control groups are used to restrict what a container can use and the amount of memory uh, available to the containers. That's all I have for this session. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.